A very warm welcome to today's discussion about edge computing. For manufacturing companies, it's more important than ever to optimize their time to value. Processes need to be digitalized still further um, to be flexible and to react to demand instantly. So cloud has been a very important component in the past to achieve the level of digitalizations these companies see today. But cloud is reaching its boundaries. Now everything is about how to bring digital enabler technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics, augmented reality to the very edge where the sparks fly onto machines and onto devices. IT and OT are melting together. So how can companies achieve that? This is why we discuss today the question, is edge computing the new cloud for factories? Today, I welcome Michael Hanisch from AWS with me to discuss the very question what the new role of edge computing is um, as we continue our journey coming from, uh, from the cloud originally. We have done that journey a couple of years since 2018 T-Systems and AWS are strategic partners. Um, working together and, and uh, combining forces. Today, I'm, I'm really happy to look a little bit with you into the very near future we, we uh, are shaping with our common customers and share our insights uh, with our viewers. Yeah, thank you, Dirk. Um, and as you've mentioned, there's, there's multiple things going on, right? So you've, you've talked about how processes are changing in production, how Products are becoming more complex, but also the production workflows are coming more, becoming more complex, sometimes driven by um, exactly this kind of automation changes, right? Because you have more connected machines, more machines generating data, et cetera, data that you need to react upon uh, to also um, change your, adapt your planning, for instance. Um, and of course, all of that requires a lot of additional in this case, IT infrastructure, a lot of compute infrastructure to actually make sense out of that, um, which of course drives even more complexity, but we're really uh, looking at how can we reduce some of this complexity of the production workflows, the complexity on the shop floor. And I actually think that, that um, edge computing allows us to do both, right? Um, because it can really bring the best things from the cloud like high degrees of automation in IT, but still having a lot of flexibility um, with a high security and, and a good economics and, and centralized management. And also the best things that you would have on premises, like very low latency to your actuator, to your sensors and other machines, um, and processing where most of the data is being generated and where you need to react to it, and really bring that together and really take the lessons learned um, in IT and from cloud architectures over the last 10, 15 years, um, and really making them applicable at home at the shop floor. I think that's, for me, that's one of the key things. So um, from our side, uh, we usually think in a, in a framework work that is consisting of four layers, the right kind of connectivity, because it's all about sending data and sharing data over the air, then the continuum between edge and cloud in the compute layer, and then sitting on top the ecosystem of the very best solutions, services, and technologies yeah, that can be trusted, um, that, that have, have been proven uh, beforehand. So I, I think that's it. Yeah? You have to, uh, to define how your approach shall be for that. So you can do that by potential analysis, put the rubber boots on, walk on ground, and just detect where the potential sits, but then make sure it neatly integrates, yeah? and, and the, the edge cloud can help with that. Um, with many customers, we discuss what is the right kind of connectivity. So they understand 5G is giving them completely new uh, capabilities to automate um, their, their production lines. So the journey is starting from here. Or other customers are considering what can be done with um, uh, artificial intelligence to retrofit um, existing production lines. So let's, let's take an example from the shop floor. So um, today, robots are assembling goods, yeah? And, and um, now new technology like, like AI is, is helping near the operations technology by inspecting the production process and immediately intervening if during the production anything is out of order. That can be because um, the robot itself is, is, is getting out of order over time, or perhaps there was a problem with the material. 
Important is the inspection is happening now in parallel. It's not a separate step anymore. Uh, the new technology automates that, that um, and is more precise than ever. The other side is, uh, of course, now you have to organize not only the data stream, so video material is, is, is very heavy data load, um, that needs to be distributed over strong connectivity. Uh, we discuss now 5G um, as, as a network technology. Um, and, and the application, the artificial intelligence, needs to be uh, really near to the robot to, to have that real-time capacity you need. Yeah? Um, and um, so the question is, how do you organize that? In the past, it was a question about how do you use artificial intelligence with big data? You could organize that from the cloud, but that is not possible anymore because um, for, for heavy data that needs to be computed or perhaps for protection of data on site, you have closed loops potentially, you have to react real fast. So it's all examples, I think, why it is important now to find means of bringing um, management of powerful IT solutions directly to where the sparks are flying. So um, the question is from AWS, uh, I think you, you know also those customer requirements. How did you react uh, to, to those requirements? What, what is your, your answer? Right, yeah. Our answer is to really look at to what, yeah, how, how we can really, like I said in the past, uh, how, how can we take the, the lessons learned from cloud computing about operationalizing, automating IT while keeping the flexibility and actually making it more flexible in the past, right? So automation and flexibility, not either or. Um, and really doing that as it's possible in the cloud and seeing how we can move that to where the sparks are flying, as you've said. And what, well, we've obviously started with AWS regions, right? Where you have the, the scalability, the, elastic, the elasticity of the cloud, where you can benefit from pay-as-you-go models, where everything is consumed via APIs, right? And you have massive scale um, to run your ERP, your CRM systems, to maybe take the data from your connected products. And for instance, if you have, um, yeah, a lot of sensor data around the production process um, that gives you ideas about the quality and how a product has been produced and maybe even data from the field, how a product has been used. And when it broke, for instance, right? Um, when did something go wrong? You can use this data to actually um, train an artificial intelligence to predict, make predictions like which of the production steps would actually yeah, determine the, the, the quality of the product in the field and how long it would last. But to also then take this knowledge and apply it, right, you need to move it closer to the, to the shop floor. And that's where you have an offering like AWS Outpost, for instance, which is basically a rack full of servers, um, AWS hardware with AWS services on top. So it, it really looks and feels like an extension of your cloud region. And then you can deploy these kind of artificial intelligence, like machine learning models um, on an outpost, but also run your, your MES there, for instance, or your scatter there. So all the systems that basically control your entire factory can then run on an outpost and connect to all the different machinery and sensors. Um, but the benefit is that it really acts like an extension of the cloud. So you can use the same, you can use the same security mechanisms, you can use the same networking controls uh, to connect it to your, your central systems like your ERP. Uh, you can use the same operational uh, tools in IT to manage everything, even if you have many of those in many different factory sites that really can run on an industrial um, kind of PC, this kind of form factor, or even some of some PLCs, really connected to your actuators, to your sensors directly with as low latency as possible, and run these machine learning models, for instance, or aggregate the data, or allow multiple of the, of the connected um, robot arms, for instance, to interact locally but still manage that centrally. Run over the air updates, um, connected, connected to the cloud, connected to the outpost, right? Um, but also being independent of connectivity so that all your machinery can still run if you don't have a connectivity um, to the cloud, for instance. So let me, let me catch, catch up there. So you say um, a continuum is, is needed yeah, to, to ensure that with the very case where you need the compute capabilities directly on the edge, like on the, on the, on the robot, for instance, yeah, 
so th this is a solution you, you provide here with green grass, for instance. So there is other cases like MES, SCADA that, that need to be hosted uh, perhaps on, on factory premise. Um, so that is covered by, by Outpost, for instance. Yeah? And then you have the cloud, but it's a continuum. Um, I think um, the message behind that, um, it, it resonates with also our experience because the big, um, the big thing now companies need to make sure that they are not making the following mistake is uh, to create silos again. So um, cloud has helped them a lot um, about breaking up silos and gaining flexibility through using a powerful ecosystem that provides them with the right solutions and services so that they can concentrate on anything that is creating value. So we know that there is a lot of cloudification strategies. How do we bring today um, uh, software into the cloud? So the key message is it's, it's not about bringing then a solution, artificial intelligence, on an edge which is sitting uh, on a device. It is prolonging the, the cloud to the very edge so that you can use the same mechanisms as before. But on the other side, um, what you also say is about you, you need to be controlled as, as a company about what kind of data is being transferred where. So that you, you gain the flexibility from the cloud through Edge, but still you are in control of managing your information. So perhaps computing down, selecting data, prioritizing data you want to share into the cloud. So I think that is very important. The other thing that you say also is, is relevant with our customers. So if we, if we uh, optimize locally, let's for instance again use the artificial intelligence which is um, controlling um, a certain process, artificial intelligence continuously learns, right? So it optimizes itself. As an enterprise, I want to use that optimization that happens locally, bring it back on enterprise level and distribute it forth into many um, into many factories, right? So this is only something I can do if I have a continuous um, ecosystem. And also if I want to, if, if there is an optimized software, if I want to deploy that onto the very edge, I also need this continuous framework for that, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And that's also what we, what we see in, um, what we see in, in other industries, for instance, right, in, in other customers. So we've talked a lot about manufacturing, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but similar requirements around latency, connectivity, or dealing with lack of connectivity in some cases, and this whole management continuum, we also see that in other, for instance, highly regulated industries such as healthcare, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, what, one, one of our customers is Philips Healthcare, for instance. They've, they've started building applications uh, on AWS services in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, and really build new applications dealing with patient data, which is highly sensitive data, medical imaging data, which is just a lot of data, right? Um, and using this data to create new applications to help physicians, doctors, nurses, to make the right decisions um, based on the diagnostics um, of uh, patients, right? Um, and of course, due to due to the amount of data being generated by an MRI machine, for instance, right? Um, you want to have that processing happening locally. And of course, you want to have, have that working even if the connectivity isn't there, right? Um, because you still need to treat the patient even if the hospital's internet line goes down. So it really should happen locally. Um, but of course, you need to do this in every hospital, right? And you don't want to build a big IT staff or send Philips staff to all of these hospitals, right? So you need to find a kind of middle ground and benefit from that and make that, make that work at scale. Um, and to, to give you an idea of the scale, so, um, Philips is operating more than 70,000 servers across 1,200 locations, right? So in a lot of hospitals, for instance. Um, and to, to make that work, right? Um, what they do is that they really build uh, their applications centrally in the cloud, they train models centrally in the cloud, and then they deploy to all these different servers in the different, in the different sites, well, more than 1,200 sites, so that they can really operate there independently and really make decisions um, on all this data uh, being sent from uh, medical images, uh, imaging machinery, for instance, um, in split seconds and deliver the right patient outcomes, right? And it's this kind of mix between central um, development and central management and the very decentralized execution 
that is yeah, that's really enabling this kind of use case. And, and I think for many customers, it's really uh, important, uh, right, to, to have that flexibility on site, also to make own decisions, yeah, and, and to have the right framework. Uh, I, I think we, we, we need to, to talk in a moment about skills as well, but I think it's all about like to maintain the skills and to be able to, to shape then like the, the local framework uh, to the needs, but then from the enterprise perspective also to have the possibility to measure like uh, steering by KPIs, so, so which changes have been successful, uh, where is a specifically a successful model driven so that we can take that back centrally and, and, and have uh, multiple um, hospitals then, then uh, benefiting from, from that. Yeah, I, I think that shows like the, the, yeah, the advantage you have by, by this um, non-silo but continuous approach, right? So, um, Michael, when, when we think about, like, I think many, many um, viewers now, um, they ask themselves, what do I need to do to bring uh, Outpost into my, my company, to bring this continuum into my company? So what is the key success factors you, you see relevant here? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, really doing this successfully, and if, if we look at companies that have done this successfully, right? I mean, obviously they, they focus on, on getting the execution right, but you also need to get the vision right in the first place and kind of understand what actually is it that you did need to do. And, and understanding and setting this vision needs to start from the top. So you need the senior executives to actually understand the, the capabilities and what it would mean for their business, where these would best be applied, and then really um, help their business lines understand what it would need for them to actually um, yeah, allow, this, allow this change to happen, right? Um, and to actually understand what kind of changes are required, you need to have a very rigorous examination of how your business actually works. How your factory works, how the processes work, how this interacts with like um, enterprise resource planning, other central systems. Um, so that is crucial to really understand the data flows, what is being generated, where do you need to act quickly, what do you transfer centrally and act on it there. Um, and then of course, you need the right, the right kind of skills. You've said it before. Uh, the real, the people who actually make this transformation happen. Yeah. And the good thing is that um, over the last couple of years, a lot of companies have invested into building these kind of cloud skills and AWS skills in their workforce, um, especially in IT. Um, and the good news is that now you can really take those skills and apply them to solving problem, uh, problems on the shop floor as well which is pretty cool, right? Because you can use your existing skills and extend, extend their reach, if you will. And of course, you have partners like T-Systems that you can bring in that really add cloud expertise, for instance, and help with this migration process to make this happen. Um, but when you talk about migrations, I guess one final thing to remark is that um, it, it needs to be like a, a project that has very high visibility and buy-in from the top. It doesn't mean that you have to that you have to change your entire company overnight, right? There's no point in boiling the ocean. Right. You really need to think about where are the quick wins, identify those, right? That really pay into this common vision that are aligned with this vision, um, and then make them happen, right? Um, from the factory to the cloud and back, uh, and really implement those, and then keep going one way after the other. And I think that is something that. Um, that makes these projects much more successful, yeah. right? I mean, T Systems has done a lot of these kind of migration projects. Um, any any other success factors that you that you see? I completely agree, Michael. Um, so let me add something here. Um, so I think you you underlined it's important to have that one company wide strategy to to focus on the continuum. So earlier we said it's important to avoid by creating silos, by optimizing locally, but then you, you don't have the synergy effects by having the ecosystem. The other thing you say, I think it's, it's very important. Um, we know from, from cloud that it's very easy to make small steps for change. So you can have like a, a roadmap that gives quick wins. Yeah? You don't have to boil the ocean, as you say, and this is also our experience. So having that edge cloud continuum allows as soon as, as that is the pretext that you want to use that as a company, allows to come from different angles. So for instance, our conversations often start with, we know that 5G will be the technology for connectivity in the future. So what can we do with 5G? So it's a 
technology inspired discussion about business processes. And here you talk to uh, to the guys who are like uh, doing the business every day. They know their processes best. And then you can identify how can I now use uh, artificial intelligence and other technologies to optimize processes. Uh, so that's an important angle. You have the pretext with the continuum, but then you can start as a grassroots uh, optimization. Of course, you also can have an architecture strategy discussions. How can I use, for instance, robotics in my whole enterprise? What kind of technology solutions should I focus on? Uh, what kind of, of um, training and skill building should I, should I decide on as a company? That is another angle. Right. And that brings us back to where we started, right? Is um, Edge the new cloud for factories, right? Right. Um, and as we've seen, it's it's both, right? It's an extension of the it's an extension of the cloud, and it's a continuum between the the far edge, and and the massive scalability of the cloud. And it's about identifying where you place which parts of your systems that actually are best suited to support your your workloads. Exactly. Uh, that's crucial. Yeah. And, and I think the message to our viewers should be don't hesitate. Yeah, You, you have the opportunity now um, to, to see what the, what the edge can do for your business, Yeah, um, to decide where to position what kind of capability um, in, in that continuum, um, partners uh, who can help you with that. So I think, Michael, we can close today with an invitation to our viewers. Um, so it, you know your business best. So if what today you learn from our conversation resonates um, with what you want to do, don't hesitate to get in touch with us, um, either directly after um, uh, this, this session or at any time afterwards. We'll be very happy to discuss the potentials of your business in regards of edge computing with you. So thank you very much for participating today and have a great and safe day. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Michael.